In today's video, I'm gonna show you what you can buy for nearly $1 million right at Young and Steel's. That's right, I'm gonna show you my latest sale, this two plus one unit I sold for $975,000 in one Grandview Avenue, and using that as an opportunity to also talk about the market, the Toronto condo market, the area, the building itself, and really try to make it as informative as possible. As always, this is Sam from Sabiri 6 Real Estate, contact information in the description box and probably on the screen. Let's start. All right, guys, let's take a look at the unit. Come on in. Yeah, so let's take a look at this unit at Young and Steels. As I said off the bat, sold it for $975,000. Let me give you the specs quickly. It's a two plus one with two washroom unit on the 20th floor with a balcony and a parking spot right at Young and Steels. It's around probably 30 seconds to maximum a minute walk from Young and Steels. In total, it's about 995 square feet, not including the balcony. And where you're standing right now, the cameraman's back is to the front door. This is the first thing you see when you walk in, which is this closet right here, you know, just the basic closet. And then when you turn, as you will follow me right now, then you will see the kitchen, right? So this is the kitchen. Now, uh, this is the cabinet fridge, right? Which with a lot of newer units nowadays, you get a cabinet fridge as opposed to just a regular fridge, right? And if we take a closer look at the kitchen here, one item of feedback we constantly got was that the kitchen is, you know, somewhat awkwardly situated in the floor plan, which is true. Nonetheless, we still managed to sell it for $975,000, which was the highest recorded sale price for a two bedroom in this building within the last six months of the sale of this unit. Pretty much, in other words put, since the peak of the market, when the market absolutely peaked in February, in March of 2022, we managed to sell this in March of 2023 for the highest sales price since the peak of the market. Obviously, during the peak of the market, properties were selling for higher than what we sold this unit for. But although it is somewhat awkwardly situated, to be fair, in the floor plan, uh, it's a very sizable kitchen for a newer unit. I mean, the amount of storage space in the cabinets are very fair, I would say. But now let's take a look at the living room and the living area, right? So this is once again, technically a two plus one. So this is where the entertainment slash living area is. And my clients, the sellers had the dining table here, right? So another thing is a little bit difficult to find is the plus one in this layout. And the plus one is technically here, but as you guys can see with the chandelier, which this is my client's own chandelier, it makes more sense to have the dining set up here as opposed to the dining set up there. Obviously here, of course, it's closer to the kitchen as well. The main selling point for this unit was just the living space in the living area and the dining, right? And the bedrooms are relatively similar size. And when you take a look at the primary bedroom and the second bedroom, I'll show you that in a second. But in terms of the building itself, One Grandview Avenue, I would define the building as a good building. It's not one of the best buildings ever. At the same time, there are definitely much worse out there. It's safely also above average, I would say as well. If I were to rate it, once again, in my own profession, professional opinion, I would rate it somewhere between 6.75 to maybe seven and a half out of 10. One of the items, one of the reasons I brought up to my clients that motivated them to sell, and I thought it was a really good time for them to sell, was that if you pay attention and come closer cameraman, you'll see that all this exposure, uh, as the cameraman will hopefully capture, are all car dealerships, right? So you do have residential further out. If you take a look, that residential is all protected, right? But immediate to the building, and right now what you're looking at is Western exposure. The Western exposure and Northern exposure, a good amount of it is occupied by big lots that are car dealerships. And these car dealerships, just like the building, are very close to Young and Steels. And as you know, Young and Steels in the coming years, and what is proposed here is completely massive. You're talking about upwards of 18 towers where these car dealerships currently are. Well, in the coming years, it's gonna be a lot of construction. And of course, when the construction is completed, it's gonna be very good for the value of this building. It is only about one year old. But nonetheless, my clients, this was not the forever home. This was just a stepping stone. And I said, look, if this is truly a stepping stone and obviously it's not your forever home, you should seriously think about selling as soon as possible because right now the market at the time, March, right now this is being recorded in May, March was a hotter market. If they wanted to cash out, that was the best time to cash out. 
maybe even April would have been a better time, but you can't time the market. The point here is the spring market of 2023 was a really good time for them to sell buy the next property, which they ended up doing, because there's imminent and upcoming construction that's not only going to cause a lot of debris, but obviously noise, and it's gonna cover your exposure, your Western exposure. So that was one of the major items of risk that we had to deal with when selling this property, and it was one of the feedbacks we got. Nonetheless, the buyers who ended up buying this property happily are very satisfied. And I have a lot more to say with regards to this immediate area of Young and Steels. As always in these videos, I don't just make it about the unit I sold. I, I always try to make it a springboard to talk about the Toronto real estate market, talk about the Toronto condo market at large and in the immediate area. But nonetheless, before I continue talking about buildings and the area itself, let's take a look at the second bedroom, right? Because this is also a property tour in part as well. So this here, we have the second bedroom. So this here, we have the second bedroom. Cameraman, come on in. And you know, as you will see when we film the first primary bedroom, uh, the size difference is not all that substantial. It's decent size, it can fit a double, a queen, uh, probably not a king, but one of the things I really like is the custom built-in closets. If you turn around, cameraman, and take a shot of the closets here, you see it has built-in shelves, right? And this is something that a lot of newer condos don't have, even in the primary bedroom, let alone in their second bedroom. Now let's lastly take a look at the primary bedroom. By the way, it's a two full washroom. One of the washrooms is right by the front door, right before you get into the kitchen. But let's now take a look at the primary bedroom. And here we have the primary bedroom, right? Once again, as you come in, the size difference is not all that substantial per se compared to the secondary bedroom. But this does have somewhat of a walk-in closet with built-in shelving and it has a private ensuite washroom. This two plus one bedroom unit that you're seeing right now was actually a little bit more of a difficult sale as opposed to, for instance, the most recent edition of this series, the one plus one with two full washrooms that you saw in the previous edition, or maybe even before that, the purchase I made for the downtown studio unit. The reason this was a little bit more of a difficult sale and something I warned my clients in advance was some of the factors I mentioned, the ensuing and upcoming construction of all these car dealerships and the somewhat awkward layout of where the kitchen is and the layout. But before we go, let me tell you a little bit more about the area. I obviously already touched on these car dealerships that are going to be developed into massive condos, ranging from 10 buildings to 18 buildings. But let me touch a little bit more on the current condominium stock that exists at Young and Steels with regards to the Toronto condo market and the North York condo market, right? Because we really like to get into the details on this channel. So if the cameraman follows me onto the balcony for a quick second, and hey, this is a good excuse to see the balcony, right? So currently, right now, one of the main condos at the Young and Steels intersection, and if you're looking around Young and Steels, Thornhill, so on the north side of Young and Steels, where it officially becomes York Region and no longer the city of Toronto, you have the World on Young buildings. Now, these buildings have the most inventory available in this 0.5 kilometer radius because they're somewhat the only buildings. They're not actually the only buildings, but they're the major player at this intersection. Other words put, if you're looking at it, this intersection or 0.5 kilometer radius of this intersection, you're mostly going to see listings from this current building we're filming, one Grand View, which I just sold this unit in, and these buildings, the World on Young build. Now, these buildings actually have high rental yield relative to maintenance per square foot. So in that category, they weirdly excel. And it's not that weird because it's very convenient. World on Young Buildings, they're combined residential and commercial. At the bottom, you do have, at the bottom, you do have a lot of commercial units. On the downside, the actual buildings, the residential parts of the buildings, I'm not the biggest fan of. The layouts are not that good in my opinion. The layouts are quite, quite suspect in that building. And overall, I would probably have to say they're very average and mediocre in terms of build. Now, this is not to say that I think they're really bad, but I think there are definitely better options out there. Now, cameraman, if you're to pan to the left side, you see another major player in the Young and Steel's intersection, which are these buildings. They're definitely much older in nature and you're dealing with much higher maintenance per square foot in nature so they're not the best investment option whether it's for future growth potential or rental yield nonetheless though they're much better end user options so those two buildings and the building we're currently standing in one grandview are indeed the major players at this current moment in time 
at the Young and Steel's intersection with regards to the Toronto condo market and the North York condo market. But believe me, this intersection is gonna see a lot of development in the coming years. It's gonna look completely different. It's gonna even see more development than the Young and Shepherd intersection in the coming years and the Young and Finch intersection in the coming years because lots at those intersections are really scarce as of now. And yes, there are a lot of new major projects coming at those intersections, but right now lots here are far more available. Once again, a lot of car dealerships, a lot of land that builders can take advantage of. And by the way, if I did not mention, obviously you're seeing me stay on the balcony. So this is the Northern exposure of this building. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me for another edition of What Your Money Can Buy. As always, I love doing these videos. I only do them after I had the pleasure of either buying for a client or selling for a client. But if you're a fan of this video, there's a lot more videos on this channel relating to the Toronto real estate market. Market stats, market reports, market trends, buyer advice, seller advice, condo reviews. Yes, complete reviews of condominiums pre-construction project previews, and so much more. So if you find this content very enjoyable, feel free to subscribe and give a thumbs up. It really helps, or you can find my contact information. Feel free to get in touch with me with any inquiries you may have with regards to the Toronto real estate market. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and stay tuned. Thank you.